Hello, my name is Steve Bolsois, and very soon I'll be on the online prosperity show with Prosper. What you're about to hear, guys, is the power of storytelling, a five-point strategic process that will take your business to an ascension of growth, improve your sales, expand your brand exposure, and improve and enhance your customer engagement. So stay tuned. Don't go away as you are about to hear the ultimate storyteller tell how to tell the tale of your story for business growth. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the ultimate storyteller himself, Steve. Steve, how are you doing, my man? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for Prosper for inviting me on this amazing podcast. Fantastic. Now, obviously, if you're watching this show, you do understand that our goal is to bring you experts in their realm so that they can help us create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. And today we're going to be talking mainly about how to use the power of storytelling in business and how that can actually help you elevate your brand. Now, you see, um, Steve B has been in the industry for more than uh is it 53 years now, or did I get that right? No, I've been in the industry for nearly 36 years. But 36 collectively, years. <laughs> uh, with our team, we have 53 years of work. Absolutely. And he's been telling stories and helping, um, you know, other small to medium businesses tell their story. But I brought him in today specifically because of his process that he has the S-T-O-R-Y methodology to literally help you um, craft stories that actually resonate with your audience and uh, stories that actually sell. Now, I've already butchered your story, Steve. If I keep going, it might actually um, not sound right. Tell us a little bit about how you actually got started and what your role is in the uh, duo that you have, um, you know, with your partner there. Thank you. So I actually come from a Hollywood background, both as a voiceover artist, uh, artist as an actor, and also at, uh, working behind the scenes. Um, I've worked across some of the biggest blockbusters um, through Hanna-Barbera, Disney, um, through the works of many famous cartoon characters as well. What I found over the many years growing my own business was that it was actually the storytellers that make a story so powerful that connect and resonate with the audience. It's not really the actors. The actors simply work to develop the character. And when I met David, who's now what I like to say, my business partner of success, not my business partner of crime, as most people say, um, he's actually come from an independent producing background. So as a film producer, as a theater producer, and also with my business partner, David, um, who's an indie producer, we found that stories are not just fictional. Stories actually create a resonance among people that create these ironclad curiosities. No matter what you do, stories validate, it, validate us. And if you tell the right story to the right audience in the best momentum, momentous way, you create memorable experiences and it is those experiences that increase your sales, expose your brand, and improve your customer engagement. Absolutely. Um, while you were talking, I was actually, you know, trying to remember a perfect use of storytelling. Um, the time when Steve Jobs brought out the uh, iPod, and he just said that that instrument in and of itself carries a thousand songs in your pocket. And right about that time, my, um, you know, Microsoft also had their own tool called the Zune and um, they didn't sell as many pieces as possible. So you can actually see that storytelling actually elevates your business in order for you to be uh, profitable. So how did you come across, um, you know, David, uh, while you were, you know, on your, on your journey towards creating this now successful business? Well, that, that's, that's a 
story in itself, Prosper. Um, I knew you were going to tell the story. <laughs> they were actually uh, auditioned for a role that we were doing in an interactive show based on the history of Australian um, colonialism. And here's the thing. He actually failed his audition. And um, he went back and reread stories of um, street theater and what it takes to actually get your story across, came back for a second audition, got the part, and then through his ability to tell the story of Sergeant Kennedy, we then started developing a relationship. There was a relational connection. And this is why stories are so powerful, because it was that relationship that we built and connected with where we then thought of telling other people's stories in a way where they actually start to develop sales. And in this process, David and I have actually made a very successful business over the many years that we've known each other, simply by not telling our story, but telling the story of the product that sells. Because every product, every service could be a character in your business. And that's how you develop that relationship with your audience. Absolutely. And that's a really good story in and of itself. I mean, somebody who would have um, failed something that was, um, you know, stipulated, but through the use of their character and their story, they actually made a difference in people's lives. Now, when it comes to business, there's always features and benefits. And I would like to think that when you're telling a story, you're actually informing off the benefits more than you are uh, relaying on the features of the product. Would you think that's, um, you know, the sort sort of sentiment that stories bring into our businesses because they mainly focus on the benefits of the actual product? You're, you're definitely on the spot here. The, the whole idea of the world, especially from a business's perspective, is you need to show that viewing audience what value you're bringing to them. Gone are the days when a person is being sold to. Today, our consumers, our customers actually have the power of choice. Everything's literally in front of them. So what you need to do is four things, and that is you need to nurture your customers. You then need to resonate with your customers. You need to attract them. And the most important thing is you need to give them an experience that is different to everyone else. And that's through that storytelling experience. The, the, the whole idea is you've got to captivate your audience. This is why I always say that the most powerful business in the world is Coca-Cola. Because in all the actual stories they tell, never once do they mention why you should buy it. Never once do they give a price. They always relate to a family value, to a health value, and then they show that across that visual media. We all know refreshing. That's Coca-Cola. Interesting. Interesting. And um, yeah, you're absolutely right because they they brought in um yes, all the family values, all the always Coca-Cola. <laughs> I'm just trying to think back and as to how their adverts um actually work. Now, obviously, would wouldn't you think that people like um, Coca-Cola have teams and teams and their teams have teams of people that are sitting behind helping them with that story framework and branding. What would a small to medium business do in order to actually be operating at that sort of level without those, um, you know, budgets that brands like Coca-Cola has? Well, here, here's the great thing. The reason why Coca-Cola and all our multi-billion dollar businesses use such powerful and such big teams is because they are big themselves. That's the only thing. You don't need a million dollar budget to hit the same storytelling or the power of storytelling because everyone tells a story. In fact, if we go back to the days of Cavemen Prosper, they were drawing their stories and today we still relate to it. There's no level of storytelling. There's no master person of a storyteller. What small to medium businesses need is the guidance of the experts and knowing 
that there is a process, a strategy that the big multi-billion dollars use that they can use at less than half the price. In fact, with just a few thousand dollars. And the reason why this is now possible in our world is because of smart technology. Apple has produced, as well as um, Android type phones, Samsung have produced film related features that give you the same quality as a big $64,000 red eye camera. So all you need is the storytelling and that everyone can do. The struggle that people have is how do you actually script your story? And this is where the expertise comes into. And this is why we have a five point S-T-O-R-Y, which you mentioned earlier, that actually gives this proven strategy that every successful business uses. And we coach you through it and we produce the story as well. Absolutely. Now, obviously, we don't have those budgets and we don't have those expertise and those teams, but you've given us something amazing here. You've given us the five uh, five step ST or our um, O-R-Y yeah. process. Let's just unpack that a little bit. What does this S stand for? Okay. So the S is actually your strategic plan. There is a, um, in each one of our five points, S-T-O-R-Y, there's an additional four points to each component. And so S stands for your strategic blueprint. And that's actually beatboarding your story. It's like a beatboxer who creates his notes. It's like a musical person. And um, to give you an idea, one of our customers who was struggling with getting known, but he was busy, actually found that when we produced his story and made him look like, an, like a conductor in an orchestra, he was getting more customers coming from Melbourne up to Sydney so that they can modify the van because he started to actually blueprint the things in his story that powerfully create that emotional charge of nurture, attract, resonate, and then of course, um, connect with the audience. That's the S. So you need a strategy. You need a strategic plan in that. The T is the teaser. And that's what, that is the, the beginning of creating your story. You need to work out from a visual aspect, how are you going to tease this product to create this bonanza moment for them? The idea is that you want to provide information, but convert the customer from an interested person to a buyer. And you do this through teasing the product, teasing the service. Keep in mind, you have to show the value add. What does your product, your business bring to that customer? You don't sell it, you show it in a teasing way. The O in STOY, uh, the STOY methodology is all about the ovation. And this is about creating a wealthy feeling of excitement. You need to get the applause, the appreciation of customers. And you do this by turbocharging the word of mouth. It's almost this booming sensation of using power words. And we all know words do create an emotional charge. In fact, Prosper, 96% of all human beings buy through emotion and justify it by logic uh, um, once they purchase it. So what you wanna do is you wanna create that emotional purchase. The R is the resonating. And this is very important because you want your customers to actually feel that they're being educated on why they need this product and how it benefits their world. And this is the proven hidden gem. This is why Hollywood makes at minimum six to $10 million on their first premiere night of any movie. It's called the yellow back. Now this is a term that only people in the industry and only people who make stories understand. The yellow back is a point where you create a feeling of truism. This is where what they see and hear actually makes them feel it is so real and so true that they need to have it. This is why people become infatuated with the Brad Pitts, the Angelina Jolie's, the, the latest Thor character. 
And this is why merchandise is nearly 70% of the movie sales. It's because you create this thing of that hammer, of that powerful car being used in, um, um, I can't, I, I, um, what's the show with um, Ben Diesel? Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Um, I can't forget that. That's <laughs> when you create this truism that if you had that car, if you had that product, if you're wearing that suit like um, Keanu Reeves in The Matrix, you become that powerful thing. And this is known as yellow back. And this is where businesses need the guidance to understand how to create that truism that resonates, ovates, teases, and strategically places your product higher up in the market. And the, be the great thing about it, Prosper, is you don't need the millions of dollars of Coca-Cola because it's the same principle. You just need the experts to guide you through how to tell your story. Oh, fantastic. And and we haven't mentioned the why. That was the why. The truism is the why. It's called the yellow back. Oh, yellow back. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. This is this is so much gold. Um, and as much as while you were talking about this, I was actually looking at everything else, obviously with business, with marketing or whatever it is, it all starts with a plan. And you've got that in, in the S part there. And with a teaser, because people always want what they cannot always get. So if you can show people, you can help them by actually helping them, but, you know, give them something, but not fully give them. Obviously, that will then create intrigue and interest in order for them to want more, be more and have more. Now, the ovation part is the exciting, um, you know, part about it, because ovation, when it comes to digital marketing, we get likes, shares. What are people, that's feedback. Exactly. What are people saying when it comes to the actual work that you're doing and resonating? I mean, people only listen to marketing that speaks to them. And um, the yellow back is, as I should say, this is the first time I've heard this. So obviously this is definitely something of a Hollywood inside uh, set up. Okay. So with all this in, in, in play, and obviously you're right, you, people are going to need experts, um, you know, to get started with this. Um, first of all, while this is fresh in people's heads, what's the best way for people to get started on the story framework with you, um, you know, so that they can become your clients? Absolutely. So they go to steveanddavid.com. That is our, uh, that is the actual program that we actually um, guide them through by showing them how to write their own story, how to write their story for business, I guess, ascension to grow their business. And also it's the package that we provide where we tell, we, we tell and produce a tailor-made production of their story. So they get three amazing things by going to stephendavid.com. They get experts guiding them through their own story tape, story making process, using the tools and techniques. They get business strategists who help them plan their business strategy and turning them into successful video marketing personnel. And they also get a product, which is a tailor-made high quality video production to start their storytelling experience of their business. Absolutely. And that's really remarkable. Now, now, um, Steve, my question now would be, you know how when people hear of storytelling, they now want to start from the day they were born to how uh, teachers were not good, you know, teachers treated them in high school when they got married. What aspects of somebody's story actually um, are needed in order to to sort of create for and relate to the audience, like you say, to resonate? It needs to be based on three things. And, and that is, it needs to actually create a phenomenal golden method. And so when looking at your personal story, because remember there's three stories you can tell within your business. You can tell your story, you can tell your business story, or you can tell your product and service story. Every one of them has their own story to tell. What you were um, making suggestion of, uh, Prosper, is that telling their personal story may be a way of developing a relationship where people actually feel your emotional pain. 
And that works. But that's not necessarily what they're coming into your business or going online to business to buy. People won't necessarily relate to your pain. What you have to do is show them how you and the pain that you've had as a business owner has actually succeeded by using the product you sell. And that's that golden moment because B, people are going to buy your service, your product. People are not going to buy you personally. So in telling your story, you want to make sure that your story goes through a, a nine-step process that actually creates a golden method. And what this golden method refers to is what we like to call the NOPERS, the number of potential customers you can get. And this is done through a mathematical actual algorithm, which shows you what works within your story and the number of people that will actually connect with that emotional moment. The other thing that needs to occur is a reliable, trustworthy existence of your story. People need to trust the story. And people need to see the reliability of that story. Absolutely. So in, so in the suggestion that you made, you would not look at the heartache that you've had. You would look at the journey that heartache has taken you in using your product to be a better person. And that's what they buy into. Absolutely. And and that's that's quite remarkable in as much as, like you said, you know, 96% of people buy from emotion. And the only way you can actually trigger those heartstrings is by telling a story that resonates. And obviously with the story framework, it gives us a sort of starting point, um, you know, of how to actually get the stories done. Now you mentioned these three stories that need to be mentioned, the, um, the personal story, the business story, and the product story. How often is one person um, sort of, um, how often is it okay to keep repeating the same story? Doesn't the audience get fed up hearing the same thing over and over again? That's a brilliant question. And that's what uh, uh, makes, when you look at movies, such a powerful thing. Because you're not telling the same story over and over again. In fact, what makes those successful businesses like Coca-Cola so on the top of the market world is because their stories are constantly evolving with the feeling of the community. And so in essence, if you even look at Hollywood, when they create sequels and they do it in such a way that actually moves with the time, they create the big word of franchise. And let's face it, every franchise is a multi-million to billion dollar conception. And so in the story process of a small to medium business, they want to at minimum have new stories at least once every three months. This way, they're updating the stories, they're engaging with their customers, and the customers are feeling, seeing something different because you want that emotional roller coaster ride. Everyone loves a roller coaster. And for those who don't ro love a roller coaster, everyone loves a thrill ride. Absolutely. I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm, you know, really getting the cross of what it entails to be telling these stories. But where do we tell these stories? Like you mentioned earlier on, uh, back in the time, I'm African and, you know, we you, you would go to caves and people would have drawn um, hieroglyphics. So they speak to, uh, you know, communicate with people that would then stay in that cave overnight while they are on their nomadic um, expeditions. Now, in the modern age, where are we telling our stories, um, you know, so that our audiences can actually pick up on and make sense of what it is that we're trying to put out there? So it's digital media, anything that creates digital exposure. So this is stuff like TikTok. TikTok has a currently a billion subscribers. Now, a billion subscribers, you can almost find a target audience in there. TikTok has over 15,000 viewing hours a day. You only need 1% of that to actually get people to see and hear your story. But outside of TikTok, YouTube is now bringing up YouTube Shorts. 
Instagram is was a similar version of TikTok, but what it did was it created commercialized moments. Facebook then bought Instagram and they call it the Facebook story. The whole process is in today, TV is dying. And the way we need to see this is these days for $19 or $9.95, you can actually watch a movie and decide when you stop and start and play back. These days, you can decide to watch a whole series and binge on it. So the power has gone to the consumer. So anything that's digitally exposable is where you want to put it at. Our recommendation is YouTube Shorts, TikTok, LinkedIn if you're a business-to-business -business client, and also, more importantly, places like HubSpot or Pinterest, Pin because these are the places that create a digital exposure of video stimulus. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this a lot because what you're talking about is just the lay of the land, especially in digital marketing, where you right. need to identify your target market. And then pretty much once you've identified your target market, clarify your message that you're going to be passing on to that target market and then determine what media best suits, um, you know, your endeavors. And like what Steve B is saying, um, you've got to have a strategic plan around everything that you're going to be doing. Otherwise you end up spraying and praying with your marketing. Now, Steve, I know this is a whole lot of, um, you know, touchy subjects and especially when it comes to storytelling everyone has an opinion um you know as to what works and what doesn't work but for those that are watching right now you would notice that from what we've spoken about with steve thousands of brands around the world are actually looking and seeking for attention even the bigger brands that we are used to like uh, the example that steve mentioned of coca-cola and so it's actually getting um, much more difficult and um, harder and harder for people that are not creating stories that resonate out there. And you just don't want to be um, a has-been that has run through, um, you know, in this whole marketing, um, you know, engine. Now, Steve, what will be sort of the last words that you might have for somebody, especially our Australian audience that, um, you know, subscribe to the notion that you don't want to be a tall poppy in your industry and you don't want to be the one that's just saying, look at me, look at me, telling their story out there, um, you know. What are they missing out on? The whole thing that they're missing out on is the interdependence component here, Prosper. If they've started a business, they need three things. They need to be known, they need to be trusted, and they need to be liked. The idea of the tall poppycock syndrome that exists across Australia, and it's not just Australia. There are other cultures um, within the global industry that have that kind of mentality. But it's what they need to do is create an unbeaten exposure by telling their story. Because what you're doing is you're not saying I'm better than someone else. You're saying, hey, here I am. Here's how I can help your world with my product. Here's how I can bring joy, value, and amazing experience. And then you're actually saying, this is why we are trustworthy and likable. And no world exists without the interdependence of sharing stories and this is why video marketing and the power of storytelling on top of that concept of video marketing is actually an unbeaten quality because it doesn't make you the supreme being what it does it makes you the local superstar that is a blockbuster of value and resonance to your customers and every successful business does that all you got to do is walk down the street and you have printed banners of power words saying come on in here's a product here's a sale here's an incentive a, a great company in australia that does an amazing job in this is Woolworths. they create this amazing thing called the extra day the everyday rewards now Woolworth is a goliath it's one of the largest supermarkets across Australia. I think they own about 48 to 52 percent of the supermarket grocery industry. In all the advertisements that they do and all the video marketing that they show, they don't say we're the best. 
They show families who are actually having an emotional experience and enjoying that family togetherness because that's what society lacks. The ability to be together like the old days when mom and dad would push the two kids in the car. And if Woolworth does it and is a multi-billion dollar profitable business, why can't your business do it? Because it's all about the story and no story makes you any superior than someone else. But every story validates you and your customer. Oh, fantastic, Steve B. And um, I would like to take this moment to actually uh, call upon the marketing manager from Woolworths to hire you as their spokesperson and <laughs> representative. And if you're listening uh, and if you're from Woolworths, just, um, yeah, rewind the tape uh, once again and, and listen to Steve talking um, the story about how you are actually doing good marketing your business. Now, Steve... We could go on and on. There's so much, um, you know, when it comes to the art of storytelling, it's, um, you know, as old as humanity in and of itself. Like we mentioned from hieroglyphics to now TikToks and everything else in between. You know what I mean? And um, obviously you have gotten people to um, uh, come to your website. Just repeat it again, just so that people can actually, um, you know, know where to start, especially when they're fo following your uh, story framework. Absolutely. So it's the steveanddavid.com. Absolutely. I'll be putting that information, um, you know, at the bottom of the call and also in the show notes. Now, there you have it. Steve and David do not want to wish, um, I mean, do not want to see anyone, especially business owners, struggling to keep their business running just simply because they cannot sell their products. So that's why they've come up um, and become business coaches themselves so that they can help you uh, tell your stories in a way that actually sells and in a way that helps you resonate with your audience. I can't thank you enough, Steve, for your time that you've taken uh, with me on this show today. It's been an absolute pleasure, Prosper. Um, we're all here to share. And even what we've done today and even what you do on this terrific podcast, it's about sharing a story. And this is why it works. Absolutely. Well, before I actually let you go, I remember, I don't know if you've ever heard of Bernard, Bernard Bashad. Um, he says that your life story and your actual existence have so much value to anybody else that listens to it because each and every one of us is here to live, learn, and contribute. So if we're going through life, you know, you never know what what you went through might actually be an answer to somebody who is seeking, um, you know, the path to have a happier existence. So just, yeah. Tell your story, share your world with everybody else, and you never know what might actually resonate. Now, Steve, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well said. Okay, here we go.